Hey gang, I was uh, reading my stuff today and Jayborn11 has asked how to troubleshoot a heat strip. He's from up north and mostly deals with uh, gas and oil fired furnaces. And he's going to be moving down here and he was kind of curious on the best way to how to troubleshoot uh, electric heat strips. I have today a brand new heat kit that has uh, been sitting on my floor that I need to do some stuff with. And this is a complete ready to plug in. Uh, this one is uh, pretty neat. Just see, you just slim the lot of them just like this. Ready to slide in. Has the disconnects already mounted on it. And uh, that's a little more compact to get in there and stuff. The first thing to do checking uh, when you're checking these things is to determine where your power problem is. Um, cut the furnace on, or the air, I'm sorry, cut the air handler on, cut the heat on, crank it up, give it about you know a couple of minutes to warm up. If it has uh, this particular one, the, a lot of, most of the ones that you run across, at least we do, I run across in Texas, uh, have heat sequencers. This particular one does not have heat sequencers on it. This one has the assembly and has a control board that actually controls the firing of them. But the first thing I would do is put my meter on amp setting and uh, while the system's running, check uh, check each of the strips one at a time. And you have the three strips here, three limit switches, I should say. Uh, one, two, and three uh, temperature limit switches on these. So I test them one at a time and uh, do it that way. And you can figure out if you have a problem with them, uh, most these are, I can't see what they are, but most of them if you run across are 5KW, so you know it should be 20 amp a strip, basically, a little, a little more, a little bit less. A lot of times, uh, this one has two, two strips. If it's difficult to get in here, you can, you can just clamp onto the main wires here one at a time and see what kind of amp draw you've got on those. If you've, um, if you've reached in here and you have power. Uh, to two of them, but not the third. Let's say I didn't have power to the blue wire here, as opposed to uh, the other two. <clears throat> the next way, the next thing you need to do is to test uh, uh, where the problem lies in the rest of the circuit. So switch over to volts, and uh, switch over to volts. And of course, we check your voltage up here as well. Make sure you actually have 240 uh, on each on each of the disconnects coming down uh, from the mains because, you know, sometimes you have a trip breaker and it's not overcomplicated. So assuming we have 240 here and here, and assuming you don't see any burned off wires anywhere, and nine times out of ten, uh, if it's not a sequencer, it's a damn burned off wire. You have corrosion got under a contact and burned a wire off. Tons and tons of those. So assuming, the, assuming that everything looks good from here to here on the blue wire, you want to check the limit switch next. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can do it with the power off. Uh, you can cut the power of the disconnect off, check your voltages. You can pull the wire off here. Uh, usually I use a screwdriver. I don't have a screwdriver handy. Usually I will push a screwdriver firmly against the plate because when you pull these, sometimes when they get old, they, uh, they don't want to, they, they'll snap the little thing off and then break the, the thing and you wind up having to do two trips. But in this case, if the power is off, I can switch it over to uh, continuity test, and I could just test from here to here, from one side of it to the other, and I know it's functional. If it was open, and uh, assuming the blower is running, the coil is clean, and everything, uh, and it's getting good airflow across the, the heat strips, and that's open, then I know this is my problem. With the system running back in volt setting, um, I would be able to reach in here to each side of it, and and to see if I have voltage across it. If I show no voltage across from one side to the other, then I know the power is actually making it through, at least at this point, and this is a good item. If I check from here to here, and I get, uh, I get voltage reading, you know, 240 volts, whatever, on my meter, then I know that this, I know that the limit switch is bad. At this point, the, uh, <coughs> That's probably the, as far as you can go uh, at that point. Let's see, from here to here. The next test that you could do would be if you have voltage from here to here, 
would be to uh, check it from from here to here in this case, from one side of the coil to the back. You see the coils just just coming here and making this loop in the back to the back side. Um, if I can read a voltage from here to here, then I know the coil is open um, somewhere in there. The same way you could check if you had the power off, say the power was still off, when you still had this pulled out, say that was still disconnected, the power is cut off. Once you've had this meter on continuity and you check from here to here, and it feels good, you can check from here to here. And I know that's good as well. Uh, you can also check from one side to ground to see if it's broken somewhere. Maybe you have a ceramic that's broken and it's shorted the ground. Or you have so much crud on them. Sometimes you get so much crud on these coils, it'll short the ground. And check the other side as well, just like that, uh, for continuity of ground. So and you can do it that way. But that's uh, it's pretty it's pretty simple. It's just a matter of locating one section in time. Check your you know do I have voltage up here going to my limit switch? Do I have uh, do I have voltage from my limit switch uh, coming out the back going to the coil? Do I have uh, voltage showing or not showing on the meter. Now, a lot of them will have sequencers instead of uh, instead of voltage coming right off of uh, off here, going to the switch or going to the limit switch. You'll have a, a heat sequencer in between, and we had I think we covered heat sequencers on one of the previous videos. The heat sequencer will be mounted over here, uh, 24 volt coil heating it up. And sometimes you can have a sequencer or a double stack sequencer, which will have two sets of contacts on it. And you can check it for uh, voltage across it while the system's running or continuity as well. Uh, if the system's off, you know, sometimes those sequencers will get stuck on, sometimes they get stuck off. But um, the system's been running a couple minutes and you can safely reach in there and check uh, across the high voltage contacts and uh, you get a voltage reading uh, in voltage setting. You get a voltage reading, then you know, and you still have 24 volts on the coil, but you're not, and you're getting the voltage reading, you know it's not open. I mean, you know it is open, it's not closed. So part of it's bad. Sometimes those double stacks, half of it will work and half of it won't. Sometimes they stick on, sometimes they stick off. But anyway, um, that is a fairly uh, simple explanation. Changing the heat strips out is uh, always fun. Having to pull the whole kit out, and pull your wiring. If you're lucky, you have something like this and you don't have 20 wires you have to pull off to get it out. Changing the heat strip. The easiest way to change a heat strip, and I wish I had a bad one to change here, um, <clears throat> is to lay it on the back of your truck. Don't do it up in the attic. Take it out in the truck or wherever it's coolest for you to work at. Um, and just start, say it's the, in this case, if it was the middle one, you'd kind of screw because this is a, a difficult little package to work with. They have rivets on that. Isn't that lovely? But if it was the outside one for this instance, I would, uh, I'd just start sniffing. I'd sniff it here, 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 anywhere you can sniff it to make it quick. The first couple times I did, I was trying to pull it out. Um, you sniff it, it comes out a lot easier through these ceramics. And then undo the screws here and here. Some of them will have a little, um, a little uh, thermal link that they put in here, and some of them don't, but most times if you have the limit switch here, you're in good shape. But anyway, that's the, uh, and of course the new one comes in this tight spring, and you have to kind of stretch it as you go through. Uh, don't want to stretch it too far, because you don't want to, you don't want to have too much left over. But hopefully, uh, I won't have to show you one of those this year. <laughs> but if I do one, I'll uh, try to remember to videotape it. Anyway, there you go. Um, another little, uh, little bit there. Scratch the table and my wife will kill me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.